fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one that have that happy people have to say. Hi there. This is the Lone Ranger speaking. Out here in the West, we have a couple of champions who are really doing okay. Champion Bob Maynard. He can grab a thousand-pound steer by the horns and toss it to the ground like it was a three-day-old calf. And bronc-busting champ Bob Burroughs. The way he can stick on a mean, sidewinding bronc you'd think he was glued to the saddle. They're both great rodeo champions and both eat Wheaties. Have been ever since they were youngsters. That's a good example to follow. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Three army wagons loaded with supplies and ammunition and guarded by a small escort moved slowly through a valley in the direction of Fort Worth, Texas. The sergeant in charge of the escort rode his horse beside the lead wagon and was talking to the driver. We were warned to watch for trouble. It seems one of the army scouts reported unrest among the Comanches in this territory. Yeah, I heard about it, sergeant. There's a rumor that some white men are arousing the redskins here, Bob. Yeah, I know. Hey, look, Indians coming down the slopes. Get up! Get up! Get up! The three wagons and the small escort tried to outrun the attacking horde, but their attempt was unsuccessful. That night, the commandant at Fort Worth, Colonel Bailey, discussed the attack with his aide, Lieutenant Poole. The situation is very serious, Lieutenant. Only one man lived to tell us the details of the attack. He see, seemed to think that there were hundreds of Comanches. The Indians are better organized than we were led to believe, Colonel. If they learn our desperate need for ammunition and reinforcements... That's what I fear. We have a hundred men here, and our ammunition is low. An attack on the fort would be disastrous. Undoubtedly. I've already sent a courier to Fort Sherman asking for more ammunition and reinforcements. But it's a question whether the men and ammunition can get through to us. Frankly, I'm very much worried by the situation. Yeah, we'll have to hope for the best, sir. I know. If the Comanche should be successful in taking this post, there'd be a general uprising in the territory. The only thing we can do now is wait and hope that help gets through to us. The following morning, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, left their camp near Dallas and rode toward town. The Lone Ranger had disguised his features and rode without his mask. He was saying, We'll ride to the showgrounds and see Hank Pickens, Toto. From the number of painted wagons we saw on the trail last night, Hank must have added considerably to his road show. <laughs> That's right. 
Me, but remember, when I have just one wagon, sell medicine while fella do jig, and get crowd. <laughs> yes, his medicine was supposed to be a cure-all, but he gave it up after people began demanding their money back. I'm sure he's doing well. Now he has just a good show. I like Hank. I'll be glad to see him again. Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Later at the showgrounds, the Lone Ranger and Tonto pulled to a stop at the gaudily painted office wagon. Oh, Silver. Oh, so easy. Oh, the big fella. Ah. Sure, glad to see you. Uh, but where's the mask man? How come you're riding with this? <laughs> Hello, Hank. What? I decided the mask would cause comment, so I disguised my features to come hey, here. It, it's you. Man alive, am I glad to see you two again. How long are you staying here in Dallas? A week. Oh. Then we head for Waco. Did intend to stop near Fort Worth a couple of days, but after we heard about the attack and massacre... Attack and massacre? Yeah, heard about it in town this morning. Seems three army wagons with an escort were attacked by Comanches. Oh, where? Uh, in the valley between here and Fort Worth yesterday afternoon. We didn't know that. Oh, sure, don't look good. Of course, I figured they wouldn't attack my wagons... Indians seem to think the painted wagons are moving totems or something like that. Oh? Yeah, but the performers were uneasy. So I told them we'd skip Fort Worth for now. I understand their uneasiness. Yes, from what I heard, it seems there are some white men riling up the redskins. Oh, they ought to be strung up for what happened yesterday. They'll be punished when they're caught, Hank. Toto, go to town and find out all you can. I'll ride to Fort Worth and talk to Colonel Bailey about the situation. I'll meet you in camp tomorrow morning. We'll see you again, Hank. Adios. Bye. Easy, easy, big fella. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. The Lone Ranger, who again wore his mask, was known at the fort and was immediately taken to the Colonel. Colonel Bailey greeted him with evident relief. Hello, my friend. I'm more than glad to see you. I heard about the attack, Colonel. Todd and I were over near Dallas when we got the news. I had no idea you were in this territory at this time. Please sit down, sir. Oh, thank you. How is the situation here, Colonel? Not good. We have only about a hundred men here, and our ammunition is running low. Oh? A survivor of the attack reported that they were at least 300 Comanches. We couldn't withstand an attack on the fort at this time. It's rumored that white men are behind the uprising. Yes, so we understand. I've sent for more ammunition and reinforcements. I knew the most men I can expect from Fort Sherman would be about 100. If they get through with the ammunition, we'll be all right here. But if they don't... I'll meet them near Dallas and help in any way I can to get them through safely. If the Comanches take this fort, it will be disastrous. Exactly. But with you to help, I have new hope, sir. I'll try not to fail you, Colonel. I'll leave at once for Dallas and watch for the reinforcements. Good. I'll give you a note of identification. Then I'll wait and hope for the best. <laughs> That night in a shack near Dallas, two tough-looking men listened as a renegade army scout spoke. Blackie, I found out the colonel sent a courier for more ammunition and reinforcements. When do you think they'll be coming through? Three or four days. We'll have the Comanches attack in the same valley. Once the reinforcements are out of the way and we get the additional ammunition, the rest will be easy. Uh, the chief says if his braves take Fort Worth, other tribes will join him in a general uprising. With the help of the Comanches, we'll be able to take over this entire territory. Yeah. I promise the Indians plenty of land, cattle, and horses if they help me get control. Well, as I see it, it's just about in the palm of your hand, Blackie. We'll know by the end of the week. Come on, Wes. We'll go have a powwow with the chief right now. The following morning, the Lone Ranger met Tonto at their camp. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy. Send a big fellow. 
Hi, Kim Sabi. Hi, Toto. I talked to Colonel Bailey. He expects a hundred men from Fort Sherman and some ammunition, which is needed badly. He fears there may be attack between here and the fort. That may be Kimasabi. Me do some scouting. Find Comanche village and hidden canyon in hills. There are about 200 braves. Hmm. The report of the survivor was correct. Ah. Because of that last attack, the Indians have guns and ammunition. They'll be sure to attack the reinforcements. Not, not good. We must find a way to get those troops and the ammunition through safely. And how we do that? I, I don't know. I... Hmm. Taro, I have an idea that may work. I'll ride to meet the reinforcements before they reach Dallas. You go to the showground and tell Hank Pickens this plan. The following morning, four army wagons and the mounted troops moved along the trail from Fort Sherman to Dallas. The captain in charge was speaking to the men riding with him. As I understand it, we're safe enough as far as Dallas. There we... Hey, look, a horseman coming toward us at a gallop. Squadron! Halt! He's wearing a black mask. Cover him, men. This may be some trick. Hi, right, sir. Oh. Good morning, Captain. Yes, sir, you're covered. Raise your hands and keep them up. Just a minute, Captain. I came to meet you. Quiet. We've been warned there are white men working with the Comanches. We'll disarm you and take off your mask. After that, you'll have some questions to answer. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is a diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get Go Power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue... When the Lone Ranger met the reinforcements, he was covered by guns as the captain in charge threatened to disarm and unmask him. In spite of the captain's order to be quiet, the masked man spoke sharply. I came here to help. I've come from Fort Worth and I carry a note signed by Colonel Bailey. Why would the colonel trust a masked man? You might read the note and find out, Captain. Keep your hands up. Man, watch him closely while I search his pockets for the note he mentions. Yes, yes, sir. Easy there. Easy, boy. Come on. The captain rode beside the Lone Ranger and found the note in his pocket. He read it quickly, then spoke. But this identifies you as the Lone Ranger. That's right. Well, I'm sorry for the reception you received. I've heard many glowing reports about your help to the Army in the past. That's all right, Captain. No harm done. I rode to meet you in order to discuss a plan that may get you safely through to the fort. Good. We'll have our discussion as we ride, sir. Very well. I uh, suggest we get going, Captain. Right. Squadron! Forward! Even after darkness fell, the wagons and troopers continued their journey. It was well after midnight when the Lone Ranger led the company around the town to the showgrounds. A short time later, the Lone Ranger met with Hank Pickens and the captain in Hank's office wagon. 
Hank, I remembered what you said about the Indians' attitude toward your painted wagons. The idea struck me that those ten big painted wagons would easily carry the ammunition and the troopers. Well, you're welcome to the wagons, my friend. My regular drivers will take them through and bring them back later. What about our horses? Uh, Captain will keep them here at the showgrounds. Till we get word it's safe to drive them to the fort. Then my roustabouts will take them to you. The main thing now, Captain, is to make certain there's enough men at the fort to withstand an attack there. I agree. We'll go through with your plan, sir. Good. If the wagons move during the night, they'd suspect something. That's right. We always pack up during the night and start for our new location at dawn. Then we'll leave here at dawn with the ammunition and troops hidden in those painted wagons. At dawn, the gaudily decorated wagons left the showgrounds and headed toward Fort Worth. The Lone Ranger and Tonto took a roundabout route, impossible for the wagons to follow, to the far end of the valley where they waited for the wagons. Concealed on the thickly wooded slopes, the Comanches also waited and watched for the appearance of the army wagons and troopers. Blackie, waiting on one of the slopes, finally spoke. Hey, wagons are entering the valley. Wes is on the opposite slope. I told him to start his group in the attack when we started shooting. We'll wait till the wagons and troops are passing. Wait a minute, Blackie. Look again. Huh? Those are show wagons. What? Say, you're right. The show must have pulled out ahead of the troopers. We'll keep out of sight while they pass. The show wagons, watched by many unseen eyes, lumbered past. Then Blackie spoke to the renegade scout. Listen, Joe, why don't you do some scouting back toward town and see where the troopers are? All right. I'll come back and let you know. Steady there. Get up. Come on. Almost an hour later, the scout returned to make his report. Who, 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 who? Step down. Blackie, there's something wrong. What do you mean? The troopers' horses are still at the show grounds near town. What? And so are the show tents. I didn't see any troopers around. Hey, they've tricked us. The troops must be in those show wagons. They must be almost to the fort by now. We can catch them before they reach the fort. You won't get the Indians to attack. They're superstitious about these fancy wagons. They'll attack after I convince the chief we've been tricked. I'll go tell them now. Then we'll go after those troopers. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode rear guard some distance behind the wagons. Suddenly, Toto indicated a halt. Oh, oh, oh. Listen, Kimasabi. Indians coming. They must have discovered our trick. We'll go warn the men in the wagons. And while the captain and I make plans to meet the coming attack, you go on to the fort. Monsieur! Late afternoon found the wagons about two miles from the fort in the foothills when the Lone Ranger and Toto caught up to them. Toto continued on as directed while the masked man pulled alongside the first wagon, on which the captain was riding, disguised as a roustabout. Easy, Silver, easy. Captain, the Indians have discovered our trick. They're coming after the wagons. Do you think we can speed up and reach the fort before they get to us? No, but there's a pass just ahead. I suggest the men leave the wagons and take positions on the bluffs, on either side of the pass. Then have the wagons go on with a supply of ammunition. Good idea. We'll be in a position to fire down on them when the Indians ride through that pass. Yes, Tonto has gone on to the fort for help. We should be able to hold our own until then. All right. I'll give the orders to the men right now. Men, get these wagons moving. Get up, get up. Get up. At the pass and before the Indians were in sight, the troopers left the wagons and manned the opposing rims of the pass. Then the wagons went on. Soon the Comanches, headed by the three white men and their leader, came along. Advised by the masked man, the captain waited until all the Indians were in the pass. Then he gave the order. Fire as well! Many of the Indians who were taken by surprise fell from the first onslaught. Half a large number remaining dismounted hurriedly and began fighting their way up to the rims of the pass. 
The Indians, used to sneak warfare, moved from tree to tree and bush to bush as they rallied and moved up toward the troopers. The Lone Ranger seemed to be everywhere at once, fighting and encouraging the men. Keep under cover! Watch right behind you! For some time, the battle raged, and many Indians and troopers were wounded or killed. The troopers from the forest! They've come to help! From then on, the battle was fierce but short. And after their leaders fell wounded, the Comanches were finally defeated. Blackie, Wes, and the renegade scout were taken prisoners along with the Indian chief. The dead and wounded were taken care of, and the remaining Comanches, completely subdued, were rounded up to be sent to a reservation. Later at the fort, the colonel was talking to Hank Pickens and the captain. Mr. Pickens, because of your show wagons, the threat from the Comanches has been overcome. I'll send men back with you to bring the horses we're left in Dallas. Colonel, the wagon sure did the trick. But you got the mask man to thank for the idea of using him like we did. My men and I wouldn't have had a chance if we had ridden openly through that valley, Colonel. I know. And I didn't dare send my troopers to meet you without sufficient ammunition. That situation was solved when the wagons arrived, and we left the fort at once. Because of the good advice given by the masked man, we managed to surprise the Indians and hold them off until your men did arrive. First time I really ever saw him in action. Oh, man alive, he's sure a fighting hombre. I've seen him in action before, so I agree with you, Mr. Pickens. He's a real American who loves peace, law, and order. But when necessary, there's no man alive, in my opinion, who can outsmart or outfight the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger